Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I'm Dr. Simranjit from Miranda House, University of Delhi. Through this module, we shall understand the composition of extracellular matrix, try to un appreciate the dynamic role of ECM in shaping the environment of cell, understand how a plethora of molecules interact with components of cell surface and regulate cell division, signaling and migration. The presentation shall comprise of introduction, role and importance, molecular components of ECM, basal lamina and interstitial matrix, remodeling and degradation of ECM, dysregulation of ECM, components and application of ECM and ECM-like materials for regenerative medicine. We will summarize this module and finally we will look at the references. Cells in complex metazoans are cooperatively assembled into tissues to perform dedicated functions with characteristic shapes and structure. The figure here presents a summary of mechanisms used for cell-cell and cell ECM adhesions. The junctional mechanisms in epithelial cells involve specialized regions of contact while the non-junctional mechanisms show no such obvious specialized structure. A few proteins like integrins and cathedrins can be involved in both non-junctional and junctional cell-cell and cell matrix contacts. The cathedrins, integrins and selectins act as transmembrane adhesion molecules and depend on extracellular divalent cations to function. For this reason, most cell-cell and cell matrix contacts are divalent cation dependent. A functional classification of cellular junction can be presented as a occluding junctions which includes tight junctions and septate junctions, anchoring junctions, those which involve actin filaments, attachment sites, the examples are cell-cell junctions, adherence junctions and cell matrix junctions or the focal junctions, while those including intermediate filament attachment sites are cell-cell junctions notably the desmosomes and cell matrix junctions that is the hemidesmosome and the third is the communication junctions which include gap junctions, chemical synapses and plasmodesmata which are present only in plants. The ECM is a general term used for complex meshwork of large proteins including collagens, fibronectins, laminins and proteoglycans which act as connective material to hold cells in a defined space required for the structure and function of a tissue. It is secreted by local cell and organized into association with cell surface protein interaction. Variations in compositions are suited to perform different functions such as in blood in which the ECM is referred as plasma, the fibers are generally absent. On the other hand, it can be deposited with calcium salts to form solid structures as in bones or packed with fibers to provide tensile strength to the cartilage. Recent studies have reported that the rapid turnover and atypical composition of ECM along with inflammatory cytokines and proteases as major contributors to osteoarthritis. A brief overview of functions of ECM. The general function of ECM is to provide mechanical support by organizing cells into tissue and coordinating their cellular functions by modulating transmembrane adhesion receptors. It determines the biomechanical properties such as stiffness, elasticity, porosity and shape of the cellular environment. It also provides positional information for controlling cellular polarity, survival, proliferation, differentiation and cell fate. It also acts as an effective barrier to the movement and provides tracks or lattices through or on which the cells can migrate. It stores and releases extracellular signaling molecules essential for the controlled cell growth and differentiation. It can also act as a reservoir for growth factors and in some cases it creates an extracellular concentration gradient of growth factors and serves as a co-receptor for growth factors, facilitates the binding of growth factors to the receptor by functioning as a co-ligand. Thus, ECM is dynamic and is constantly remodeled 
by enzymatic phosphorylation, sulfation, cross-linking, cleavages by proteases and glycosidases and also through oxidation influencing the interaction of the cell with its microenvironment. Each anchoring junction requires a tri-molecular arrangement of adhesion proteins, adapter proteins and cytoskeleton filaments. Adhesive proteins in the plasma membrane of the cell establish connect between adjacent cells through CAMs or to the ACM through adhesion receptors. In silico classification has been proposed for ECM and its associated proteins and the term is referred to as matrisome. It can be defined as an heterogeneous assemblage of proteins that compose the ECM and other associated proteins that covalently modify, for example, chemically cross-link, phosphorylate or cleave, bind to or otherwise regulate the composition and structure of ECM. Now, we look at integrins. Integrins are the principal class of receptors that mediate cell matrix adhesions in epithelial sheets. These adhere to three types of most abundant molecules in the extracellular matrix of all tissues. Proteoglycans, collagen, multi-adhesive matrix proteins, integrins, they detect both chemical and physical signals from the matrix and deliver it to the cells via large plasma membrane complexes. This becomes conveyed via cytoskeleton and signaling proteins to determine the function of both nuclei that is through gene expression and proliferation and cytosol by affecting the cell shape and migration. The globular head projects more than 20 nanometer from the lipid bilayer. The proteins link the matrix protein to the cytoskeletal inside the cell. The two subunits alpha and beta they are held together by non-covalent bonds each alpha subunit and beta subunit has a single transmembrane helix and usually a short unstructured cytoplasmic tail. The alpha subunit is produced as a single 140 kilodalton polypeptide chain and cleaved into small transmembrane domains and a larger extracellular domain containing divalent cation binding sites. The two domains are linked by a disulfide bond. The single divalent cation binding is present in the extracellular part of the beta subunit. Binding of extracellular ligands to ectodomains of integrins lead to outside-in activation while binding of the head to the cytoplasmic beta integrin tails triggers inside-out activation. The integrin family of receptors is classified into four different categories. First, RGT binding which recognize arginine glycine aspartate sequence and are combinations of alpha 5 beta 1 alpha 8 beta 1 and several such you know combinations collagen binding combinations laminin binding combinations and finally the leukocyte binding types of integrins which are limited to leukocytes only binding of an extracellular signal that is the ligand to integrin triggers a signaling cascade inside the cell. This cascade of reaction leads to activation of extracellular binding sites on integrins and makes it receptive for cell adhesion. The ECM presents clearly two identifiable structures that is the basal lamina which is a condensed matrix layer formed adjacent to epithelial cells and other covering cells example the mesothelium or muscle cells, adipocytes, etc. And second, the interstitial matrix, which is a space filling structure of huge variety that triggers the main characteristic of a given connective tissue. A model of basal lamina can be predicted based on major components, specific interactions of molecules form a two dimensional network of basal lamina. The important components are type 4 collagen, laminin, nitrogen and the proteoglycan perlecan. The basal lamina is a thin meshwork of ECM molecules which separates the organized group of cells from adjacent connective tissue. For the epithelial cells, it lies just underneath the basal surface while for the non-epithelial cells such as the muscle cell, it may surround the cell entirely where it also protects during contraction and relaxation. 
The lamine helps the cells to adhere to each other, such as during the embryonic stages, plays an important role in tissue regeneration, formation of a tissue compactment, and permeability barriers. Basal lamina forms a tight blood brain barrier limiting the diffusion of molecules and in kidneys the lamina surrounds the glomerular blood vessels in unusually thickened nearly up to about 100 nanometers to serve as an effective filtration unit. Together the basal lamina and the immediately adjacent collagen network they form the structure which we refer to as the basement membrane. Now in this slide here presents an overview of the components of ECM and in the coming slides we will be looking at them one by one. We first look at type 4 collagen. This type is primarily found in basal lamina. It is the largest and most prominent of the extracellular matrix proteins. It is categorized into fibrillar and non-fibrillar collagens. Fibrillar include 1, 2 and 3 and non-fibrillar is typified by collagen 4. The fibrillar collagens twist and form a collagenous triple helix of either identical alpha chains referred to as a homotrimer or different chains called as a heterotrimer. These associate to form long fibers increasing the tensile strength. They contain a high proportion of hydroxylated amino acids mostly prolines and lysines. This hydroxylation is necessary for the extensive hydrogen bonding that occurs between the subunits and between the monomers. The chains are also active sites for covalent modifications such as hydroxylation, glycosylation, oxidation and cross-linking. The helical pattern is possible because of a characteristic repeating sequence motif glycine XY where X is generally a proline and hydroxyproline in and in position Y and less often it is lysine or hydroxylysine. Type 4 collagen are not cleaved after secretion and interact by their terminal domains which can bind to form multiple ligands in forming a meshwork. Long fibrillar alpha helical domains and the globular domains can interact in different orientations to form flexible, multi-layered network of sheets. The receptor for type 4 collagens include certain integrins, discoitin dom domain receptors 1 and 2, glycoprotein 6 on platelets and leukocyte associated immunoglobulin-like receptors, members of Menno's receptors family and a modified form of protein CD44. They can play critical roles in helping to assemble the ECM and in integrating cellular activity with the ECM matrix. Now, let us understand the biosynthesis of collagen fibrils. The synthesis of procollagen alpha chains occurs in the rough endoplasmic reticulum followed by the addition of aspargine-linked oligosaccharides to the C-terminal. Prohydroxylation of certain prolines and lysines along with other covalent modifications and cis to trans isomerization of prolines. These modifications enable self-assembly of propeptides to form trimers which are covalently linked by disulfide bonds. The chaperon protein HSP47 also helps to stabilize the helices or prevent premature aggregation of the trimers. The folded procollagens are transported to and through the Golgi complex and secreted. The N and the C terminal propeptides are removed and the trimers finally assemble into fibrils and are covalently cross-linked. The three collagen precursor chains are assembled in the ER lumen to form triple helical procollagen molecules and transported to the Golgi complex. After secretion into the ECM, the procollagen is converted into collagen by the enzyme procollagen peptidase. The processed molecule of procollagen called the tropocollagen then bind to each other and self-assemble into collagen fibrils. The fibrils assemble into collagen fibers by lateral interactions. In striated collagen, the 67 nanometer repeat distance is created 
by packing together rows of collagen molecules in which each row is displaced by one fourth the length of a single molecule. On the other hand, structure of type 4 collagen comprises of a small non-collagenous globular domain at the N terminus and a large globular domain at the C terminus. The non-helical segments which introduce flexible kinks interrupt the collagenous triple helix. Tetramer and higher order structures are formed by lateral interactions between triple helical segments, head to head and tail to tail interactions between the globular domains. Multiple unusual sulfamine or thioether bonds between hydroxylysines or lysines and methionine residues covalently cross-link some adjacent C-terminal domains and contribute to the stability of the network. Next, we discuss laminins, which are a family of multi-adhesive, high molecular weight, cross-shaped proteins that interdigitate with type 4 collagen adhesion receptors. These are the principal basal lamina ligands of integrins. Large heterotrimeric glycoproteins comprising of alpha, beta and gamma chains linked by disulfide linkages into asymmetrical cross-shaped structures. The polymerization occurs by self-assembly of laminin globular domains. These play a crucial role in neural development where they act as a guiding path along which certain exons extend to find their eventual synaptic targets. The cross-shaped laminin consists of a globular domain and a long arm in which the three chains are covalently joined by several disulfide bonds. The functional domains on the ends of the alpha chain bind to organ-specific cell surface receptors, whereas those at the ends of two arms of the cross are specific for type 4 collagen. The cross arms also contain laminin-laminin binding sites, thereby enabling laminin molecules to bind to each other and form large aggregates. Laminin also contains binding sites for heparin, heparin sulfate as well as for intactin. Next, we look at perlecans. These are also called as basement membrane specific heparin sulfate proteoglycan coproteins or HSPG. These are also referred as heparin sulfate proteoglycan 2 that is HSPG2. Multiple domains help to bind and cross-link several ECM components and cell surface molecules. These cross-link ECM components by binding to about a dozen of molecules such as laminin, nitrogen or intactin, cell surface receptors and polypeptide growth factors. The nitrogen also referred to as intactin are polyvalent matrix binding proteins. These are sulfated monomeric glycoproteins in structure and help to stabilize the basal lamina by cross-linking ECM components. We will now consider the major proteins of connective tissue. Type 1, type 2 and type 3 collagens constitute nearly 80 to 90 percent of the total fibrillary protein. The type 1 collagen fibers are organized into long fibers of great tensile strength Tendons usually can be stretched without breakage and that is because of these collagens. Thus, allowing tendons to connect muscles to the bones and withstand enormous force. Other minor fibrillar collagens, type 5 and 11, co-assemble to further regulate structure and properties of type 1 fibers. In tendons, all the type 1 fibers are interlinked by microfibers of type 6 collagen and oriented in the direction of the applied stress. The associated proteoglycans and type 6 collagen coat the surface. The type 2 collagen is the major collagen in cartilage. The thinner fibrils are oriented randomly and cross-linked to the viscous proteoglycan matrix by type 9 collagen. The globular N-terminal segment of type 9 collagen 
projects outwards from the fibrils along with chondritin sulfate chains which is covalently linked to the chain of the flexible kink. These anchor the type 2 fibrils to the proteoglycans and other components of the matrix. Based on function and sequence homology, collagens have been categorized as first fibril forming collagens which includes type 1, 2, 3, 5, 14 and 16 which are found in tendon ligament, cornea, bone, skin and vitreous humid and they provide tensile strength. Second, the fibril associated collagens with interrupted triple helices called as the facets. These connect fibrillar collagens to one another or to the ECM components. They include type 9 associated collagens with type 2 in cartilage and vitreous humor. Other examples include type 12, 14 and 16 are also important members of this category. Third, network forming collagens which have head to head interactions between type 4 collagens which are stabilized by methionine, lysine crosslinks and help to form intricate filtering networks in the basement membrane in the kidneys. Fourth, the anchoring collagens which are type 7 collagens, basal lamina of epithelia of skin and connect to the underlying connective tissue. Then next is the transmembrane collagens which are the type 2 collagens with a short cytoplasmic end terminus and long helical ectodomains and function as adhesion receptors. These also include type 13, 25 which are found on several cell types. Then endostatin producing collagens. The angiogenic peptide is produced by the cleavage of type 15 and 27 found in some basement membranes. Beaded filament forming collagens include type 6 monomers which self assemble into a bead on a string microfibrils and these are found in many tissues and link cells. Let us now study the interactions of type 1 and type 9 collagens. The type 1 fibrils in tendons are oriented in the direction of the stress applied to the tendon while the proteoglycans and type 6 collagens coat the surface. The globular and the triple helical segments of about 60 nanometer in length at both the ends of type 6 collagen which contain and bind to type 1 fibrils and link them together into thicker fibers. Arrangement in the articular cartilage is also to provide cushioning and tensile strength and type 2 and 9 are tightly packed along their length. The chondroitin sulfate chain covalently links the flexible kink of the type 9 fibril and is essential for providing resistance to compression. Not shown in the figure are the minor components such as type 1, 4, 5, 6 and 11. The second figure on the slide here depicts the structure of proteoglycan in cartilage. The cartilage functions to bear stresses during joint motion by virtue of its stiffness, strength, resilience and shock absorption. Approximately 100 molecules of negatively charged chondroitin sulfate glycosaminoglycan that is CS gags along with their short keratin sulfate covalently bind the core protein and an, at an average distance of 2 to 4 nanometers to form agrican. This macromolecular complex bind to nearly 40 nanometers interval to a molecule of hyaluron to form supramolecular proteoglycan aggregates. This non-covalent binding of N-terminal domain of the core protein to a hyaluron molecule is facilitated by a link protein. These aggregate form the gel-like component of cartilage that is enmeshed within a network of reinforcing collagen fibrils. Let us now look at the organization of fibronectin chains. The primary structure of each chain consists of about 2500 amino acids and arranged into three types of repeat sequences namely type 1, 2 
and 3 giving the molecule a beaded appearance under the electron microscope. Alternative mRNA splicing can exclude a few repeats like E3A and E3B as in circulating fibronectin. The conserved RGT sequence enables the type 3 repeats to bind integrins. At least 5 different sequences may be present in the 3CS region as a result of alternative splicing. Other regions include specific binding sites for heparin sulfate, fibrin and collagen. Now let us look at elastin that forms the amorphous core of elastic fibers. These are highly hydrophobic ECM proteins with flexible fibers rich in glycine and proline with a total length of about 750 amino acids. The elastin is processed from tropoelastin which is secreted into the EC extracellular space and assembled into elastic fibers close to the plasma membrane. After secretion, the tropoelastin molecules are cross-linked by covalent binding of interchain lysine residues resulting in a flexible elastic network. Such a property is necessary for lungs, arteries and intestine which continuously change shape. Elastin comprises nearly 50% of the total dry weight of iota, the largest artery. As we can see in the figure, each elastin molecule can assume either an extended configuration when tension is exerted on it or a compact configuration wherein the fibers recoil to its compact form when the tension is released. Next we have glycose aminoglycans also called as GAGs. These are linear polymers of disaccharides that are often modified by sulfation. Proteoglycans are the membrane associated or secreted core forming proteins that are covalently attached to one or more GAG chains. The protein core of proteoglycans is not as large as the fibrillar collagens but due to heavy glycosylation takes up a massive volume. The sugars are usually a repeating disaccharide unit of which one is usually the uronic or D-galactose while the other sugar is N-acetylglucosamine or N-acetylgalactosamine. The major groups are hyaluronone, chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate, heparin sulfate and the keratin sulfate. These carry a net negative charge thereby attracting positively charged sodiums which attract water molecules via osmosis keeping the ECM and the resident cells hydrated. Transmembrane proteoglycans such as syndicans facilitate cell ECM interaction and help present certain external signaling molecules to their cell surface receptors. Syndicin is an important modulator of fibroblast growth factor signaling. The hyaluronone a highly hydrated GAG is a major component of the ECM of migrating and proliferating cells. Certain adhesion receptors bind to this protein to the cell. Large proteoglycan aggregates containing a central hyaluronone molecule non-covalently bound to the core proteins of proteoglycan molecules, example the aggregan contribute to the ability of the matrix to resist compression forces. However, a rapid diffusion of nutrients, metabolites and hormone between the blood and the tissue cells is permitted. Proteoglycans can function both as a substrate for cells to attach to while the heavy hydration shell acts as an effective barrier to signal to receive signals from the other cell. This is useful during the development when there is a great deal of cell migration and there needs to be ways to segregate cell both by attracting them and repelling them. These bind several secreted signal molecules. For example, the heparin sulfate binds to the fibroblast growth factors to conduct cell proliferating signal to the cell. The regulatory role of proteoglycans is also exerted to other secreted proteins, especially the kinases, by immobilization, 
sterically block the activity of protein or by promoting the degradation. The matrix can also sequester the protein and create a concentration gradient. The multi-adhesive proteins are large multi-domain proteins which often comprise of many copies of a few distinctive molecules that bind to and cross-link a variety of adhesion receptors and ECM components. Of these, fibronectins are the most important multi-adhesive matrix glycoproteins. These abundant proteins principally bind integrins along with several other ECM components like collagens, proteoglycans and enable the anchorage of cells to the matrix. The role of fibronectin is extended to cell adhesion, growth, migration and differentiation. The two types are the soluble plasma fibronectin also called as the cold insoluble globulin which is the major protein component of the blood and produced in the liver by hepatocyte. Then second is the insoluble cellular fibronectin. It is the major component of the extracellular matrix. A variety of zinc dependent metalloproteases execute the degradation of different components of the ECM. These are synthesized in the inactive form and often require cleavage for activation. Based on the target of degradation, these are often named as collagenases, gelatinases, elastases and agrikinases. These can be secreted into the ECM or remain as integral part of the cell membranes as a transmembrane protein or covalently linked molecules to the membrane itself. The ECM metalloproteases are categorized in three major subgroups based on the structure of the enzyme. First, matrix metalloproteases, second, disintegrin and metalloproteinases, and third is the atoms with thrombospondin motifs. Increased ECM breakdown by abnormally high levels of heart specific MMP1 expression result in inappropriate collagen loss and diminished contractility, leading to tissue destruction. On the other hand, increased production of ECM components can also be initiated by chronic inflammation or tissue injury. The cascade starts from the production of transforming growth factor beta, that is TGF beta, connective tissue growth factors, that is CTGF, and interleukin 13, that is IL 13, leading to a stimulatory effect on producer cells, resulting in pathological fibrosis and increasing the chances of cancer. The excessive ECM exerts a positive feedback loop on fibroblast to synthesize more of the ECM components. The 3D microenvironment in which the cell resides and functions has proposed ECM and ECM-like components as target molecules for biomaterial design and fabrication, especially when aiming for implant or test system generation. Simplest of the application includes decellularization by removal of cells and hence the antigens thereby reducing the chances of inflammatory reactions. These have been targeted for burn therapy and plastic surgery. However, a major limitation is the disruption of crucial structural tissue elements, especially the elastin and depletion of important connectors, proteoglycans and GAGs. We can now summarize the learnings from this module as first the extracellular matrix or the ECM provides a three-dimensional microenvironment affecting cellular function and behaviors through a bidirectional signaling transduction via cell surface and based on the location and composition of the ECM it can be categorized as the interstitial connective tissue matrix which surrounds the cell and provides structural scaffolding for tissues and secondly as the basement membrane which is a specialized form of ECM that separates the epithelium from the surrounding stroma. The ECM is a highly complex network of chemical, physical and biological components that vary in composition from tissue to tissue and organ to organ. It functions 
as a reservoir for biochemical signals controlling cellular function and undergoes constant remodeling by balancing its synthesis and degradation by a variety of enzymes, for example, the matrix metalloproteinases. The major molecular components include glycosaminoglycans and the fibrous proteins, example, the collagen, the elastin, fibronectin, and laminins, which self assemble into nanofibrillar supramolecular networks that fill the extracellular space between the cells. These are some of the references which have been referred. Thank you all students and I hope you have gained from this module.